You see how that so everything happens for a reason. This is what I'm telling you. Listen, listen, listen. Life, life is beautiful. We get, we got, we had to find the irony in it. We had to find the beauty in it. We all have stories. We can make each other cry. I can sit here and tell y'all some things. Make you make you want to pull your hair out. I can tell you and tell you how I made a fool out of myself. I can tell you how I've been made a fool out of. I can tell you, but my story is no different than anybody else. I'm just a person. I'm just a, I'm I'm not nobody extraordinary. Welcome to Kwame TV again. Today I'm here at, I, well, I travel all the way from Accra to Pram Pram, Pram Pram, to see my mom. When I say my mom, it's my mother, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Mother Vera, Mama Vera. Everyone call her Mama Vera, number one. The only Vera <laughs> that you can get in Ghana. Is the one that's sitting down wow. here. I'm telling you. Wow, we. Yeah. Wow, and, um, we. <laughs> Mama is from the States and transitioned down to Africa. And not, Africa is a big continent, but she chose Ghana, home. This is where she feel like to be. And we're going to ask Mama, why Ghana? Why did, why did she leave America? Beautiful place that everything is there to Ghana. Mama, thank you very much. Thank you. Let me say thank you, thank you again. Thank and you I say, thank you. when I see you and I see your hair, I remember my mom straight. That is why I say wow, you're my mother. How sweet. See, the last time how when sweet. I met you at a party, how sweet. Oh, I look at her and say, hey, I crossed about three times until that lady introduced me. Wow. Oh, yes, because. Uh, I see my wow. mom in you. It's awfully flattering at my, my age to uh, to get any, any compliments. So hey. at my age, I, I, I thank you so much <laughs> you for being welcome. so generous. Yeah, but that is, that is the truth. That's what I feel when I thank see you. you. So you. Thank you. So you are my mom and you are my mom. That's thank it. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you so much. So, Mom, we are in Pram Pram. Yes, we are. Ghana. Yes. Around Accra. Yes. Yes, yes. Mom, why? Why? Uh, That's the main question that I... Why? I the why. Uh, it's simple, but it's complicated. Um, politically, I'm a Pan-Africanist. Started off as a black nationalist. I was involved in black power. But the, natu the natural progression of black power is Pan-Africanism. And I became a Garveyite. And I believe in Garvey that we're all Africans and we must repatriate and rebuild Africa. I support Nkrumah, support Garvey, I support Julius Nyeri, support uh, Kwame Touré. It's about Africa and the future. The brain drain, the brain drain of Africa is, is unfortunate. And uh, because of what has happened, um, Africa suffers. That's true. Before I came to 
to Ghana, I asked my uh, my neurologist because I had had a traumatic brain injury to refer me to his colleagues in Accra. Okay. And so he went on about doing what he was doing. I'm in his office, and he went on about doing what he was doing. And so I thought he didn't hear me, so I repeated myself. I said, would you please give me a referral to your colleagues in Accra? And he looked at me squarely and says, I have no colleagues in Accra. I said, well, what do you mean you have no colleagues in Accra? Accra. He says, all my colleagues are here in the States. Wow. So he want to tell you that there's no doctors in Accra? None that he knows of. None of his, his colleagues. He said, we're all here. <laughs> I, I, was, I was dumbfounded. I was dumbfounded. I believe you. I really was. I was hurt and I was dumbfounded. Yeah, I believe you. Yeah. But he also told me that when I get to Kamasi, yeah. his house is the house next to the Asante Hini. Asante Hini, yeah. Make sure. Yeah, he said, he said, that's my house. So Next he's a door. Ghanaian? That's why I see him refer me to your colleagues. I'm not talking to wow. an Iranian. <laughs> what I thought is, he's an American or is he, so he's a Ghanaian. So how don't he have it? Oh, you don't know, do you, you don't know how rare American doctors are. Mm. Oh, so, oh, you, do, you don't know I that don't know. that the doctors in America are Nigerian and a guy named. I know that there's Ghanaians over there. The same thing we have in but the But you don't, you don't know that most are Ghanaian I mean, or Nigerian. I mean, not that one. Very rarely out of all of my doctors, I think I have two American doctors. And you know, in America, we have doctors for every, I have nine doctors, doctors for every part of my body, okay? So out of that nine, two are Americans. Okay. All right, so I, um, let's go back to the 60s, the 60s. when I was with Kwame Krum, uh, uh, Kwame, 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 Kwame Ture. Who was Kwame Krum or Sekature? I was with mm -hmm. Kwame Ture, who used to be called Stokely Carmichael. All oh, right, okay. That's, he is the architect of Black Power, mm -hmm. and I was a member of SNCC. That's the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, man. He was in charge of it at the at the time, and that was my um, embrace of my Africanity and my political awareness. And that was the first wave of folk going to Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. Folks were, because of Jewish Nairi, folks were going to Africa. Africa. And I remember I was 19, I'm like, Dar es Salaam. I like the way they rolls That's off my salam, tongue. Yeah. One day salam. I'm gonna go to Dar es Salaam, you know? So I went about my life. Like a, a good little colored girl who was raised to get an education, get married, and have a family, which I did. So for 50 years, I was a wife and a mother. Wow. How many kids do you have? Four. I bet they are grown up just like me. F 52, 48, 43, and 41. Yeah. So just like me. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All, all men with families. And so the oddest thing happened. My uh, second husband and I uh, divorced many, many years ago, about 27 years ago. But he passed away in May of 2020. Okay. But when he passed away, it seemed like something said, you're free. Even though we you have been divorced it. many years, it was the craziest thing. The voice said, now you're free. You can do whatever you want to do. The children are grown. You have no connection to that man anymore. It's, it, you, you, what, what was family, even though it was fractured, is no longer exists. You're free. And so I thought, what does that mean? I've been a mother, a wife, 
all my life, yeah. you know, ever since I was 20, I've been somebody's mm -hmm. wife or mother. And here I am 70 now. So 50 years of my life, I've been encumbered. Mm -hmm. Always thinking about the greater good for the group. Not for yourself. Of course not. Of course not. It's about the family. The, yeah. the family. That's true. And that's what the mothers do. Mostly, I think, ninety nine point nine nine percent mothers. Yeah. yeah. That's but but that's do. that's another conversation yeah. for another time. That's true. So I'm not going to digress into that. That's true. But suffice it to say. It hit me. I'm free to go. And the voice, this is a conversation with me. Now, nobody there. This conversation is going on with me. You're free to go. Go where? Go anywhere you want. Where do you want to go? Uh, uh, uh. Africa. Africa. <laughs> Africa. You want to go to Africa? I want to go to Africa. Where in Africa? I don't know. I don't know. Then I start. Dar es Salaam. Yes, here's the yeah. Picked up the phone and called some, some good friends of mine who, who are doctors in, in, in D.C., but who have built like five clinics and hospitals in Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam so I, I, I called Mama Williams. I said, Mama Williams, I want to go to Dar es Salaam. She said, fine. I know the ambassador's son and this one and that one and that one. Tell me when you're ready to go. We yeah. have people on the ground. You know, wait, Ready. wait, yeah, yeah. You want to go to Dar es Salaam? No problem. You know, our uh, our daughter's uh, opening a dental clinic, and my son has a no problem. I was then I called a friend, and she said that she had a good friend of hers who was the president of the Bank of um, of um, Gambia. Gambia. I said, oh, that's a good connect. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's good. Your friend who's the president of a bank? Okay, follow through with that. Let's, let's see what happens with that. She dropped the ball and then followed through. I watched a video on YouTube about uh, his brother named Bamani. And he was at uh, at the ancestral wall, and then he went to this lady's house, and folks were looking at the water and the beach and everything. And I thought, wow, look at that water. And it is right there across the street. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Ghana. Ghana. Okay. So I called a friend who I met years ago who said, I, I had done something for him um, when, when he was transitioning from the United States back to Ghana or whatever. Ghana, yeah. I was I was helpful, and he says, "If you ever get to Ghana, let me know. I got you." So I said, uh, "I'm thinking about coming to Ghana." He said, "Okay, you can come and stay in my place." Wow. Person. Then a young woman. Mm, then a young woman who was so full of herself That's in her twenties and thirties and forties now. I I can be a helpmate to a man that's compatible with, with me, yeah. So before I die, that's the last thing, I, I, that's what I want to do. I would like to get married for the last time. And I, I, and I, 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 I think you're going to get it. I hope you get it. I, I, I feel it. Yeah, I, I, I really, that's I really feel it. That's your wish, it's going to come true. I, I, I feel it. And... Um, uh, I believe what was wrong with our people is that we're dysfunctional because we're out of alignment. A woman is a compliment to a man. A man leads the family. The woman supports the man. man. No, I, I I understand when people say I can't support a fool. Well, you chose a fool. Why did you choose a fool? <laughs> if you know he's going to be the head of your family, you, why support? Why, why choose a fool? Choose the head of your family, someone that you want to have children That's by. True. A worthy man, a decent man. <laughs> You know what? Sitting here looking at my 74th birthday, which will be in November, 
I see how we complicate our lives. Life is really simple. It really is. It's live and let live. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to like what I like. I don't have to like what you like. But I have the right to like what I like. And so do you. You And you have no right to try to change me or flip me or any kind of way to, sh to, to suit you. But we do that. And we make other people miserable, make ourselves miserable. You hear on the street, if it don't fit, don't force it. That's true. And it's a reason for that. If it's supposed to fit, it'll fit. That's true. If it's supposed to fit, it will fit. If it's not, then it won't. So simple. It's so simple. I am not everybody's cup of tea. That's all right. I don't have to be. I'm not for mass consumption. I'm from that niche group of folk that get the gift that I get. They get it. For the others, God bless y'all. That's true. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. That's cool. So I think we need to agree to disagree. I think that's, that's so cliche. Is. It's so it's so cliche. It's so cliche. It's that we agree to disagree. No, leave people alone. Is what I'll say. Leave people alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. If you don't, you, if you don't leave fit, alone. you leave them alone. Leave me alone. Leave her alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. So, the mom, now I've seen that um, you live in your dream country, your home, you have your dream house, your dream kitchen. Oh. All I need is a red kitchen aid. A red kitchen aid. A red kitchen aid. Okay? Anybody want to donate to me? It has to be red, not black. I got to have a red kitchen aid to go in my kitchen because I am bringing grandma's desserts to Pram Pram Baby. Wow. So, <laughs> so the mom, um, now, I know that you are also a storyteller. I, you know what, and I don't want to cry. Don't cry, please. And I don't want to cry, but I am the daughter of a master storyteller. I will celebrate his 100th birthday, November 4th. Oh, wow. He transitioned from this earth in 1988. That's my daddy. On November 4th of this year, I will have a big soiree to commemorate his 100th. Believe you me, I'm going to pull out all the stops. I am my daddy's baby forever and ever. Amen. My daddy was a consummate teacher intellectual poet the party started when he walked in a room it was over when he left he loved good music he could dance play cards sing play basketball football run track <sighs> I'm sorry. Sorry to bring the memories back. <sighs> but it's, it's good, though. It's good. I'm not the only one that's a, a daddy's girl. My daddy left his imprint on me. And there's nothing more captivating than a good story. I have been so... I won't say blessed. It's enchanted. 
I'm enchanted. Sounds silly, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's true. If I told you all the people I met in my lifetime, you look at me and say you're just a li- you're just lying. Nobody's nobody's met all those people. Why are you sitting here lying like that? It didn't happen like that. You have a vivid imagination, Vera. You didn't meet all those people. But what has happened is, for whatever reason, my life crosses the paths of the damnedest people. It's the craziest thing. And I think it, it helped that I grew up in D.C. and not Muscle Shows, Alabama. And I lived in Houston and Dallas and Los Angeles. I didn't live in Armpit, Idaho. So I'm places where people are. So uh, I've met folks from all the way from Winnie Mandela to Mary McKee, but Harry Belafonte, um, Etta James, Dizzy Gillespie, Della Reese, um, Calvin Lockhart, um, uh, Mickey Rooney, Charlton Heston, it just, Jaja Gabor, Nancy Wilson, it's just a it's just a a mixture of people that's just so daggone crazy that you can't put this story together. I'm going to give you one about Jaja Gabor because I think it's funny. Do you know who Jaja Gabor is? I have no way, no idea about that. You never heard An of Jaja Gabor? You never no heard of Jaja no Gabor? No idea. You told me. Okay, Jaja Gabor. <laughs> was a very famous Austrian American she was born in Austria but she she got her fame in Amer- in, America, in America in the movies mm-hmm. and she was a notable because she had been married like nine ten times just vain, very famous men and she married the man that owned all the Hilton hotels wow yeah okay mm-hmm. Conrad I, Hilton yeah. was her husband Okay. Okay, so Jaja Gabor, as far as white women concerned, was the epitome of a white woman next to they didn't talk about Marilyn Monroe, but Jaja was like the glamorous, the clothes, the diamonds, the whole yeah. nine yards. Okay. So in the fifties and sixties, she's all on talk shows because she had a very heavy accent and she was full of herself and everything was darling this and darling that and darling this. Well, it must have been like in 1990, I was at uh, an award show. Uh, I guess I'm skipping all over the place. I worked for a magazine, okay. and the magazine was called B.E. B. You see uh, one of my covers in, in my dining room, just when I put Billy D. Williams on the cover. Yeah. It was called B.E. Okay, so I'm backstage at the Emmy Awards in Beverly Hills. Don't ask me why Jaja was there. I they get we were giving her some kind of awards. We're backstage at the Image Awards, okay? Me, Jaja, and her husband. Jaja's husband is Prince Von Holt Von 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 Okay, I gotta describe what he looks like, okay? Okay. About 5'10 is kind of stocky, losing his hair. And he's in full dress, German regalia, mm-hmm. medals, sashes going across here, Ooh. golden epaulets up here. Can't remember. I think he had his, his saber. His pop. I think he had the belt with this. I swear, I can't, can't, I can't remember if if he did or not. But I would think if he had on all of that, he must have had the saber on, on too. He had on the Nazi Jack boots that are polished like they're patent leather, mm-hmm. and they come here and they buckle. Mm-hmm. 
here. They fit the calf and they buckle. Yep. And they have a sole that's about that thick. So I'm backstage at the Image Awards. There's Jaja, there's Prince Von Hoff, blah, 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 blah. Standing there, they're looking at me, I'm looking at them. So I said, how are you? How are you, darling? She says, how are you, darling? I said, I'm fine, how are you? And so the prince, oh, the prince has on kid skin, gray suede gloves with a, with a, um, a lip that is that thick. So the gloves fit here and they fan out like that. Yeah. So the prince comes over and I go to, and he grabs my hand. My hand is like, yeah. grabs my head and kisses it. Wow. And kisses it. Can I stand up? Yeah. Can I stand up? Will I still be in the frame? Okay, so, so Prince Von Hall takes my hand and kisses my hand, right? So all of a sudden I feel I feel the laughter coming up from my intestines, all up my <laughs> upper glass, all up my upper GI. I'm trying to hold, I'm trying to hold this. I'm trying to hold it. I'm trying to hold it. So he kissed my hand. Now this is what he does. He looks at me after he lets my hand go. And he clicks his heel, clack, clack. Wow. It does I that. that. I thought I'd die, I swear to God. <laughs> I thought I'd die. I felt like Fred Sanford. I felt like the whole heart. Like, this is so great. You know this is insane. He clicked his heel. And, and because of the, the boots were so thick and the so yeah. so thick, they went clack, clack. clack. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? It's odd. <laughs> you know what? He did like that. And I'm like, what in the world is this? Yeah. Chris Von Hall, what? You can, you can Google him. He's still alive. Oh, no. You can, uh, Google Zsa Zsa Gabor and, and do, her last that. husband, Prince Von, and you'll see it. And you'll see it. As a matter of fact, Google him in his uniform and you'll see what I'm talking about. But that's just one of the fu funny, funny stories I have, gazines of them. As a matter of fact, my friend at the University of Ghana has recorded about 24 stories of, of uh, the story of, of me and, and uh, Della Reese and, and Etta James and whatever. In other words, n none of this would mean anything to you if you don't know know about African American culture. It's African American culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um uh what I find offensive is that the world appropriates African American culture as much as they want to, but they don't want to give us credit. Oh yes. S swag and cool is it's our invention. It's, yet, it's our invention. We created cool and swag. We create. We create street style. We create style. B baseball caps have been worn f forward for for eons until one black man turned it back was created a style, turn it sideways. Like in, in DC, uh, um, we, we started wearing sun visors upside down. They're wearing sun visors this way. In DC, they flipped them the other way. They don't they flipped it so that the visor's not down, the visor's up. That's style. We are style. Black people are style. We move in style. We move, we are organic. But don't you think that I'm even apart from those styles, black people created everything, even in the music, reggae, even, hip -hop, even, even type of our, music. Our, our music I comes from our it. suffering. Yes. I, I, you know, where, where there's blues, where, where there's jazz, uh, where there's bebop, where, where there is uh, 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 hip hop. Uh, it's all for myself, the, all, all the genres, oh, all the genres, yes. e even yeah. even the one I can't stand, that that the that techno. 
No, I can't stand that. <laughs> but I, uh, uh, the other one, uh, uh, what do you call it? Con country and Western. Oh, what's it? Uh, yeah, and I hear that music. Here. Yeah, yeah, and I hear that here. And when I do, it, it it really irritates me because what it says is that people here have no concept of the history of things. They just doing stuff. Yeah. And I said, how dare you play play the music of these very folks that that as they're tracking us down to kill us? That's because what they, they play on know? the radio. Yeah, but well, well find out, <laughs> find out. Don't be yeah. celebrating. Don't be playing playing no country and western music at your daggone funerals. Those people spit on you. That's true. But they they spit on you. They call call you all kind kinds of gorillas yeah. and apes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. You know. You know. You know what happened to me today when I was coming? There was a news from Geneva coming to that out that um, all the sicknesses that come in is from Africa. It was today when I was coming. Oh, that's what and they're trying to do. They justify to come in and kill us. They said, yeah. uh, they're and coming from a laboratory. Monkeypox, no. Ebola. No. And we know all yeah. those yeah. sickness were created from Yeah, they created. And we're still standing. Yeah. And, and it was no COVID over here. And people not dropping dead over here. Yeah. And that's a and people yeah. And people in close confines on all these little jitneys and tro tros and stuff. Yeah. If, if it had been a thing, it would have been thousands, thousands and thousands, thousands dead. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but but let me tell you something. Until Africa is is, is um, is ready and prepared to fight to the death. You, you, anyway. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be respected. Everybody else is ready to fight to the death. Let me tell you something. I watch the parades in in Beijing. You haven't seen a parade until you see the Chinese march. You have not seen a parade until you see those Chinese march. Watch that. Watch the different branches of Chi Chinese armed forces from the women to the men and watch them. Not only are they all the same height, how they did that, I will never know. They're all the same height, the same size, and the precision is breathtaking. And they are marching in a plaza that God knows the dimensions of that thing. And they are lined up and they're moving as one organism. As one organism. This, this, this one is white. This one got on green. They got on red. They got on blue. They got on black. And they keep on coming. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking until Africans do like this. Until Africans do that, we're going to be the laughing stock. And I, was, I was sickened when I heard gold was found in Uganda. I was sickened. How are you going to announce you found gold and can't defend it? <sighs> well, what would you do that for? That's true. What would you do that for? What you goof? Uh, excuse me. What would you do that for? And you can't defend it. Why, 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 why are people playing at defense? Everybody got to have, have can defend themselves. Why are Africans so content at not being defended? What is that about? Yeah, because Africans are not one. One of the first key. What? We are not one. We're not united. So we can't defend ourselves. Okay, no, okay. So let's just roll this back. You know, you know who Fidel Castro is. I know Castro from Cuba. Okay, you know who Che Guevara was right. Yeah. Okay. You know Cuba is right. I haven't been there, but I read a bit about it. Okay, Cuba is a very small island. Yeah, close to America. Very close to America. Yeah. I hope you don't think it took 40,000 men to, to flip that island over to a socialist island. 
I hope you don't think that it didn't. You know how many it took? You know how many? No. 35. With a will, with a will to win. Let's go to Vietnam, shall we? Yeah, I heard about Vietnam War. You heard about it? I heard about it, that American, Americans fought in Vietnam War. For what? What did they fight for? I didn't, I didn't you know. know. I know that they went they, there. I know just the way they go to they, places. They, they, didn't, they didn't know either, which is unfortunate. And that's my generation. It's, it's not funny. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's my generation of young black men who gave their lives because some white men decided that they should and told them they're fighting communism. People over Vietnam living their lives. Vietnam is no threat to America. No, no, no threat to America. No. None whatsoever. So why did they go there? They went there because it, it was something to do with the American tin company. Something about tin. Something to do with, with, with the ingredients it, that it takes to make tin uh, for, for um, um, you know, cans? Uh, yeah, tin cans. It was yeah, something cans, that they yeah. have over, over, over there, there, and they said they and wanted to can. stop the incursion mm -hmm. of the communists from coming down in in, in Vienna. That's that, that that's what they used. That's what that's what they used. So the young young black boys swept up off off the out of high school, off the street, my, my first husband included, and um, sent over there. They don't know why. They just. You know, they've been told to do this. They send their little allotment home to mama and whatever and giving their lives and their limbs and their sanity. And they don't know, they, and end up, end up um, traumatized with PTSD yeah, yeah, and come home yeah. and, and have babies who are deformed yeah. and have babies who are deformed. Let me, when my husband got back from Vietnam, let me tell you, my husband got back from Vietnam a car backfired. We were walking down the street. I'll never forget. Car backfired. He dove on the sidewalk. This is what the United States government did. Never before in history do you have somebody in a war zone on a Tuesday. And that next Tuesday, they walk in the streets in New York. They didn't, they didn't deprogram them. They they didn't uh, they did didn't let them uh, 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 train them to matriculate back into the world. They just put them back in. But they did something to make sure that they wouldn't upset the government because the, it, it has started that the young black men were seeing. Was, see, this is King had gotten killed. They had seen what was going on, and my husband included. They knew m munitions. They knew how to, to do Molotov co cocktails and, and, and how to build bombs and everything. So the white man said, oh, we can't let them go back fighting. So what did they do? Oh, drink all, uh, uh, smoke all the weed you want. As a matter of fact, try this. My husband came back mainline in heroin. My husband's legs, I thought he told, he, I, I, I thought, thought they were um, from leeches. He told me he was in the Mekong Delta. And these leeches they have over there that attach itself to your legs. So he had all of these sores all over his, and I saw that, I just cried and cried. I said, someone's eating on you like that? Did they, oh, I cried, I cried. You know what that was? My husband was shooting, shooting up in his legs and his feet. I don't know what a junkie is. What do I know about a junkie? No. I don't know. My husband would go to the store and come back two weeks later. I don't know. This is to keep them from forming revolution because they were ready to fight. They say, how dare you send us over there and get us killed and come back here and, and, and we're, we're, we're niggas. We're still niggas. I know that that's your reality. You lived it. You can tell a story better than me. I'm, I'm just a little, little young woman 
who was sitting at home with a with the young man who was so messed up, who never got over it, who never got over it. And we had a child who we don't know what's wrong with him. I took him to every hospital I could. And come to, he's 52 now, he has Asperger's syndrome. Well, you didn't know what that was. And then, and, and I guess a hundred years from now, we'll find out it comes from Agent Orange. My, you know, he's um, in the States. My son? Yeah. Yeah, he's in the States. He's 52. He's high, he's high functioning. He's high functioning, but, but he can't count money. So if he has a $100 bill, a $50 bill, and a $3 bill, that's $3. Wow. You see the problem yeah. with that? I'm sorry for that. Ah. But, but he... It, it happens. We we live. We we live the best we can. The good news is he he is self sufficient because he's been with his girlfriend for thirty years. He's fifty two. They've been together since nineteen ninety two. Wow. She can count, but she can't tell time. So the two of them they they met with uh, they met uh, with this. Uh, Association of Retired Citizens, which my second husband was the director of that program. So they they met, and so they they lived together, have nice apartment, <laughs> plenty of so whatever. So she can count, but she can tell the time. Right. And he cannot count, but he can, he can tell, tell the time. time. So perfect. The, the, yeah, the, yeah, it's perfect. Perfect match. Yeah. yeah. You see how that so everything happens for a reason. This is what I'm telling you. Listen, listen, listen. Life, life is beautiful. We get, we got, we had to find the irony in it. We had to find the beauty in it. We all have stories. We can make each other cry. I can sit here and tell y'all some things. Make you make you want to pull your hair out. I can tell you can tell you how I made a fool out of myself. I can tell you how I've been made a fool out of. I can tell you, but my story is no different than anybody else. I'm just a person. I'm just a, I'm I'm not nobody it's extraordinary. The only thing extraordinary about me is my artwork. I think I, I love being an artist. What I want you to tell me now, I want you to tell me one story from your dad. One story from my dad. We're going to cry now. I don't want you to cry. We're going to cry. Tell me one Every story. time my daddy told his story, he, he cried. My father's uh, my father's brother that was beside him James James Walter Hope was blinded was blinded in the Pacific Theater during World War II after he was blinded they sent him from Pacific back to Washington, D.C. on a train, they, you know, he, that he came into San Francisco, San Francisco to D.C. on a train. My grandfather, born in 1872. Okay. And this is like 1940, 45. He died in 1946. Meaning, this man that's going to meet his son was born exactly seven years after the Civil War, meaning that everybody he knew that was older than the age of seven had been a slave, including all his aunts, uncles, mother, father, everybody, every adult that he knew was a slave. That's how close it is. My grandfather's relatives were slaves, not 10 generations past, so you all, all right. think yep. is way, way 400. No. It's just all right. Yeah. Okay, so here's my, my grandfather at Union Station with Sunday Best on to pick up his blind son in his uniform. They proceed to the USO canteen 
which is a kiosk serving donuts, free donuts, and coffee to enlisted men. My grandfather and my uncle approached the U.S. O canteen and were denied a free cup of coffee and a what? donut because they were black. Hmm. What's your grandfather's name? Grandfather's name. My grandfather's name was John Walter Hope. Oh, that's why you got Walter Hope. Excuse that's me? Why, that's why you got the name here. Hope. Yeah, but your name, Vera Hope. Yeah, from my father, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, my maiden name. Sick. Yeah, that's where hope comes from. You, you, usually, your follows. You, yeah. you, you, your yeah, maiden so name is your father. Your, your mm. father's name. Yes, mm. hope. Okay. Okay. That's why I celebrate hope. Hope is on the front door. Hope. I love my name. I love it. I had to grow into the Vera. You know, Vera's a big name for a little child. But I'm Vera now. Vera is a mature woman's name. Not only mature woman, a mature worldly woman's name is Vera. But hope, I love it. So that that story speaks to America, the hypocrisy of America, a cesspool of racism. Is America? Amer America is is propaganda it has people all over the world thinking it's the great it's the great democracy it's great for those it coddles it's hell for those it despises let's come back to Canada. what do you find most what what is the three things that you love most in ghana the the, the I love my serenity and the quietness. I love the innocence. I started crying yesterday. I saw a ragtag group of little children. It was, I counted 15. They were, they were barefoot. They were barefoot. One little girl was holding a pair of flip-flops as if it was a pair of Balenciagas, a pair of flip-flops. They were dusty. Two didn't have on clothes. One had on a, a little raggedy shirt, little raggedy clothes. And they were singing. They were singing. And I stood there and looked at them, and they looked at me, and they waved. And one just started looking, and she just smiled and waved them. And I couldn't help but cry the tears. Just, I said, my God. They were poor, but very happy. I never seen, I'm like, I'm thinking of my, my babies live like little queens and stuff. My children live like queens little princesses and these little children were I even me I've never been I've never been dirty I, you know we don't allow our children yeah, to be true. dirty we don't allow our children to, to be dirty I understand. so our children play within parameters you can play do this but you can't do that because you're not going to get dirty to get dirty yeah. your mother like oh no you can't get dirty he can't go over there, he'll get dirty. <laughs> it's true. I'm serious. Yeah, I know. But know these children, the children, you saw that it's it's a pile of dirt right out here, Mama. One just jumped in it. Just jumped in it. I've never seen them before. <laughs> I've never seen it. I was amazed. I was touched. I was touched. I just looked at those children and I thought, they're happy as they can be. They don't have any big screen TV. No. They don't have all them Game Boys. They don't have... No. My, but they are still happy. My grandson sends his Air Jordans. So as a matter of fact, my son is packing up Air Jordans right now to send over, over here. I have a little, little, uh, a little boy. I've adopted him and his his brother. So my son loves is a 
it's a sneakerhead. You know what sneakerhead yeah, is? No, yeah. so somebody who buys yeah. a lot, lot of designer sneakers. sneakers That's all my yeah. son does. Yeah, so sports, he yeah. does the same for his son. Oh, okay. So he doesn't go out and buy two pairs. He go out and buy five pairs of sneakers. You know, and, and whatever is going on, he. So my son, my grandson is eleven. He's not going to outgrow none of that stuff. None of it's messed up or dented or messed up. He outgrows and because he's uh, he, he going fast. He's going fast. The so kids I said, fast don't anyway. throw it out. Send them to me. So he sent me, no, I brought six pair, seven pairs of Air Jordans with me okay, when I came. Mm -hmm. uh, just the Air Jordans, not to mention the New Balance yeah, yeah. and all that other and stuff. The Nike and all those. I brought, yeah. I brought that, that with me. And um, so uh, um, the father of the little boy came came uh, to hear the pram pram mm -hmm. and took the shoes back and took pictures of the kids in the shoes and they were standing there like this. <laughs> It was, so, it was so happy. I said to my, my grandson, my grandson, say, Grandma, they like him? I said, yeah. I said, from now on, everything that you have, tell your mama, just put put it in. Uh, and all of the, that polo, all his polo jackets oh, yeah, and all that Ralph Lauren, yeah. all that yeah, Ralph Lauren yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. They sent all of that stuff. So, uh, so we're sending that uh, that to them. Uh, but we have to stop this pension we have is showing off pension that, that our people do. We yeah. show we show off. We don't have anything, but we show off like we do. Yeah. We don't I have guess. money. Yeah. We don't have money, but we show off. This is something in us that makes makes us do that. Oh, I don't know. I, I I think in America it's because we can't have what we want. We can't live where we want. We can't move how we want to move. But we sure going to show off on Sunday morning. Yeah. On, on Sunday morning. You all may not have this church. here at, at, at church in the United States. The, the janitors drive their Cadillacs to church. Wow. They know better than to drive their Cadillac to work. They have a beat up car that drive to work because that white man can't know they got a Cadillac. But in our community, the Cadillac is the car of my of my daddy generation, mine, and yeah. you got a, a Cadillac. Yeah. Now Mercedes so, so, yeah. is 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 the, from a different category. Yes, yeah, yeah. a different. Yeah. But in America, it. it's Cadillac a Cadillac. Yeah. It's yeah. a Cadillac. And it wasn't until it was it wasn't until I turned sixty that it hit me that I was a part of that too. <laughs> I was a part of that too. I I was uh, I, I was diagnosed. They thought I had um, stage four colon cancer, and it I, it ended up I didn't. So what did I do? What did I do? I don't know. Don't count that. <laughs> you bought a Cadillac and use it as well. <laughs> I was celebrating. I bought a Cadillac. My kids laugh. My kids laugh. But that's my way. I, I'm alive. I don't give me a Cadillac. Bought a Cadillac and a mink coat. I said I'm gonna. I'm, I'm alive. I ain't, I'm not gonna die. So the next, <laughs> because of our time, what advice will you give it to the people? A diaspora at the moment that they think Africa is not a place to come because there's a lot of people still yeah. don't feel you know what that. they think. They t tell them to pay in my living room <laughs> <laughs> if they think they think I'm over here squatting in the in the in the weeds or somewhere. I I have air conditioning in here and I have um, uh, two flushing toilets and. I got a filter water in there and a beautiful stove and stuff. But listen, what you all don't know is, and this it hurts me to my heart. I'm trying to get everybody I love out of out of America. I don't believe America has five years left. I I, I don't. I don't see America going beyond five. I, I, it, it just my heart says, get out, get out, y'all, get out while you can get out because when it starts. Like when the Titanic, the Titanic was going along and started lifting slowly. Okay. Yeah, slowly. You see the darn thing 
is Go tilted. Ahead, yeah. You don't get on a helicopter and say, you know what? Let me get on a Titanic before it goes down. Let me experience a little bit of it, even though it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. It's going down. Get your things together. Liquidate all you can. Sell everything that you can. Bring who's willing to come, because everybody don't want to come, and find you somewhere that you can have your garden. Get you some little chickens. That's it. Knit, sit on the front porch. Your social security have you over here living like J. Paul Getty. Because if you got a $2,000 check every month, that $2,000 check turns in automatically to 16000 Ghana CDs. Because it's eight times two. It's eight times for one for one U.S. dollar, that multiplies it to eight dollars. You're over here living like J. Paul Getty. That's true. But they don't want to hear that, though. You can get a nice house for three hundred and fifty dollars over here. A three bedroom house, three hundred and fifty dollars. Why is you paying? Bigger than this. Yeah. Why bigger than pay? this. My friends over here got they pay four twenty five for a house bigger than this. Right over here, you can build. The, the the I would want them to see this big monster down here that these people paid uh two hundred and ten thousand for. They got ten ten bathrooms, eight bedrooms, an uh, in ground swimming pool, a ballroom, a pool house, two servants' houses, and a barbecue right down here. They came from twenty nine palms. They came from twenty nine palms, California, last Christmas. The sister, two sisters, the brother-in-law, the son, and the daughter-in-law put their money together. Two ten. They got this big monster sit on the corner, and it's two stories, so they look out over the ocean. That is beautiful. What can you get? You in DC for two hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars? A one bedroom, a one bedroom efficiency that you can sit <laughs> in this corner over here. Let them stay over there because these white folks, uh, are, they're getting ready to go crazy because they feel that they, they're going to be replaced because their, their, um, uh, their, their fertility is going down. In 29 states in America, they have zero population growth. Zero population growth means more people are dying than are being born. Oh, yeah. That's in 29 states in America as we speak. Is it both the uh, uh, the white and the black? We ain't talking about no black people are unconsidered. Yeah. This is what you got to understand when we talk about any figures. You're not considered. You are addendum. So when they talk figures, they're talking about white folks. Yeah. They're not talking about, about you. Blocks, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. you're not a part of that. You're yeah. not even included. You don't live. You don't live. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, don't ever think that. When you see when they when they're talking about, and then if they are, they say and blacks. <laughs> and blacks. See, you thought when I said you, you thought that meant I thought it meant both. Why would you, you actually think that? Yeah, that's what I thought. No, I thought it meant both. Yeah. No, you you're not included. See, see, see. This is what you have to understand. The default of America isn't everybody. The default is white. You are this. The default of American is not you, me, and white folks. It's white people. You get. Okay. When they say American. They don't have a picture of me and you. You get to be American only three times. During war, April 15th, when it's time for taxes mm -hmm. and during the Olympics, otherwise you're a nigga. And don't forget it. Oh, sorry for that. And don't forget that. It's, it's, it's and don't not, forget it. And don't forget it. You're a fool if you forget that. I won't. It is sad, but I. It's beyond we, sad. 
It's beyond sad. Anytime the police shoot, shoot somebody 60 oh, yeah. times oh, at a yeah. traffic stop that happened mm -hmm. la last week. But they let a mass murderer kill people in cold blood and and escort them to the police car, but they shoot this boy 60 times. He didn't have a popsicle stick on it. So I'm telling black folks, stop killing yourself with the stress of dealing with not knowing what's going to happen to your children, what's going to happen in the White House, what these crazy people are going to do. Come and live in peace, y'all. Come, come live. I get you some avocado off the tree. Get you some mango. <laughs> Grow you some flowers. Chill. Come and chill. Come and chill. Come and chill. Come that, and that, chill. That, that, that is what I'm saying. Come and chill. You don't have to be no radical like me. You don't have to be no radical. I, I, I know folks are seeing this. That woman is crazy. She is crazy. She can be. Let me tell you something. I've never been contented in my life, but I'm content now. I'm content because I'm at peace. I lived in America, and I've, I've told my story. My story is um, uh, at, at Howard University and at the Smithsonian. Both of them uh, asked me to uh, tell the story of being black in Washington, D.C. during segregation. So what nobody wants to talk about is the reality of black life in America that doesn't fit the narrative. See, the narrative is all black people are ignorant, trifling, dirty, and low down. But I know better. I know better. I know a narrative that says black people are educated, middle class, work very hard, had good jobs at single family homes and still came up against crazy white folks every day in their neighborhood who didn't want them there. That's my story. That's what I know. I know, I know what it, I know what it's like, and I'm going to send you uh, my podcast about what it's like being the only little black girl in a classroom where your white teacher never calls on you, what that does to you. But it does to you. Yeah, that's true. I also took my time to call out the hatred and the evilness of white women that black women do not have. We're not capable of it. Let me tell you, this is what happened to me. When I was four years old, the Supreme Court ruling uh, that uh, Brown versus the Board of Education came down. That simply means that separate and equal schools were not separate and equal. So that meant uh, that I could go to white schools. Now, this is in Washington, D.C. So on the day they registered me to school, my mother, my father, my aunt and uncle dressed to kill Hat gloves, my mama had gloves, high heel shoes, my daddy's blue suit, my uncle, all of us. I look like I just stepped out of a band box. I, I'm all dressed up and everything. They're going to register me to school. So uh, uh, my 14-year-old cousin was going to junior high, and his job was going to be to walk me to school, and then he goes on down the hill to his school. Unbeknownst to them, he never did. Never, ever did. Why? He walked me to the corner and left me, which meant I had to walk the gauntlet past all of these white women who took it upon themselves to come out of their houses, stood on their porches, or came to the gate on a, and called me, you nigga, 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 you nigga, you little nigga, four years old. Going to the first grade, going on five, I would have been five that November. This is September. I'm walking past their house. So they got to do that every morning and every evening when I went back by myself. Under what circumstances would a black woman do that? Somebody tell me. No way. 
No, Under what no, circumstances no, would a no, black no, woman no. yell at a Chinese child, a white child? No way. It's not going to happen. Not in torment this world. them every day? No, not in this world. No black woman. So this is what I want to know. What is it about them that makes them so different? That they thought that was okay to do me like that? I think they are just jealous. I think they want to be yes, and they can't. I think they are jealous of everything that we have, including our continent. I tell you, that thing right there, it triggered me forever because I don't take any foolishness. I don't take any foolishness because they tend to want to denigrate you or uh, or put you down is that as a black woman, I have to be sharp upstairs. I have to be articulate. I have to be informed. I don't get to be a goof off. See, I don't get to be any of that. I better know what I'm talking about. I better be on my when, when I'm on my job because I represent 40 million black people on my shoulders. I walk in there representing everybody. My grandmother told me that wherever you go, you represent me, granddaddy, Uncle John, Aunt Vera, Uncle Richard. You taking everybody with you. Little white children don't do that. They don't have a responsibility. Am I lying? That's true. Do you represent everybody? I represent a lot of people. I had I that. I had, I had. I had that. that I is. had that. I had, I, that's what I, 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 that was my responsibility from the age of four. And so many of us too. But I just want to dispel this myth of uh, thing to people not from D.C., but, but between the block of 14th in Colorado and 16th in Colorado were the embassies of Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Ghana. So from 1958, all my life, I saw diplomats from Africa. The funny thing was, they didn't see me. They didn't see us. You know why? No. They didn't lower their gaze. They came into our neighborhood. They went into the safe way just like we did. Do you think they gave us eye contact? No. No. Do you think they greeted us? No. No. Not ever. And what do you think why? What do I think why? Mm -hmm. uh, because they listened to the propaganda of white folks telling them not to associate with us. The same reason why Africans, when they go to the United States, don't go to white churches and live in white neighborhoods. They don't live in black neighborhoods to, to, to this day. I had a story like that. And then they want to, and then have the audacity to side with white people against us. They, I they don't even know our story. They don't even know our story. And when white folks say, well, yeah, they are. That's right. You, they sure are. Oh, well, you don't know nothing about us. You haven't studied. You don't even know our story. But since, since you get, get here, you, you associate with, with white people because maybe because of, of they're, they're easier to what is it black people may be intimidating because of the cool factor and all of that maybe I, that's I, I it think, I, I wonder why it is I think some of the um, the story that I heard that the guy that told me he said when he went and got his visa or his resident permit, they told them that don't associate yourself to the black Americans that in there because when you do that, they're going to take your visa from you or your wow. resident permit from you. And that's something. But you wouldn't have that if it wasn't for, for knuckleheads like us who went down the State Department and pleaded with them so you could bring yourself over to America in the first place. But you get over there and, and you have the audacity to w don't want to associate with us. It, it, it burns me up. 
It burns me up. It really does. Because you wouldn't be over there if it wasn't for people like me. That's true. You know, I'm over there. I'm o- over there at the South African Embassy with babies on my back and pushing strollers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And all, only only for some South African to tell, tell me, you, you're racist against white people. You need to be. <laughs> Keep watching, comment on TV, like, subscribe, and share. I'm still the youngest old boy here with uh, Mama Vera. And um, because of our time, we're going to um, end our conversation here. But it's going to be part two of the of this conversation because there's a lot of story. A lot. Mama hasn't told me even her own story about how she became a storyteller. But because of our time, we're going to come back again here and talk to her. And there, you're going to hear more story about Mama Vera. If you are not a member of Kwame Na TV, help us to subscribe, support Kwame Na TV, to get you those type of stories all the time, whatever you are in Western world or you are in Asia or whatever you are, so far as I you a black man, Africa is calling you. Come to Africa, especially Ghana. This is where we are sitting now. And feel the ground. Feel the breeze. Feel the fresh air. Yes. When you walk down here, three, four minutes, or let's say, hi, it's five minutes. You the see ocean. The, sea. the ocean is mm-hmm. just around the corner. Just around the corner. If Africa is not heaven that they are talking about, then where is where it? Where is it? I always say, Africa is the heaven. Do you know where the Garden of Eden is? It's Africa. It's, it's where you can put anything anywhere and it just grow. And it grow. Keep watching Kwame Na TV. I love you guys. Subscribe. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Great. <laughs> I love talking to you.